Ray, aka Razor. Yes, sir. When did you start what we're seeing here today? Oh boy. I've been thinking about this question for like weeks. <laughs> I knew it was going to be the first question or, or, or one of the first two or three questions. Was it a slow process or did you? No, no, not at all. Um, I grew up uh, in New Holland. Growing up, I kind of started getting more into what they call classic rock now. You know, I was into all the Led Zeppelin and Aerosmith and all that stuff as it was coming up. I knew I had a passion for like hard driving music. What turned everything for me was in 1982. A friend at work who told me he was going to go see The Who. And he says, dude, you have to go. The Clash is opening for them. I was in Shea Stadium. I was in freaking Shea Stadium in 1982. As soon as I heard London Calling, which was the very first song they played, I, I was just more than hooked. I already knew The Clash before I went to see them live, but that just pulled me in. Ironically, I didn't dress the part back then. I was more like into the new wave scene. I liked the punk rock music, but I like, yeah, I started wearing paisley shirts and dark clothing and let the hair get spiky, you know, just, uh, just having fun, you know, and that's sort of where it all started, uh, the clash and like starting to get into the cure and early U2 and stuff like that. That changed everything. That just changed everything for me. So I just started having fun. Dad died in 82. And uh, I did go through, that, which is weird because he died before I went to see the clash. And uh, that was another thing that kind of changed me for a time, a period of time, like two to three year period. Family struggled like to try to figure out who we were. You know, we lost our identity. You know, mom and dad were together, I think, 26 years. And uh, <clears throat> it was just strange. I wasn't really part of any scene through that, like two, two, it was about two and a half years. What pulled me out of that, again, was music. And that's when I really started getting into that new wave kind of kind of scene. I, I I I needed to define an identity. I just felt lost. I didn't have much self confidence. I was shy to begin with. I was shy as hell, you know, for the longest time. And uh, my dad was very strict, and I think that's another reason why I was kind of shy. But music it changed everything. Yeah, you know, I just listened to F and M and Millersville College Stations back then, and I was hearing so much cool music. I thought, man, I love this. Like I I didn't want to listen to any local stations because of that. And uh, that's really what changed everything for me. It pulled me back out, and music has brought me into this today. I never thought I'd still be doing this now. I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I mean, you? I'm 55. Okay. I'm actually 56 next Wednesday. And uh, I, do, I don't know why, I, why, it's just in my blood. It's just not something you can change. It, it's just there. This started, uh, around 2000, okay. around 2000. I actually bought this jacket in 99 at Zap, Zap and Company. Um, everybody knows Zap. We still miss it. We all miss it. Um, I've run into Steve Murray a few times and uh, first time he saw this, we, we had talked before in the store, but not really got to know each other. And one of his friends came over to say, oh, you should come over and talk to Steve and stuff. I said, oh, I don't know. And he said, oh, just go talk to him. And I did. And what Steve didn't know is I found a button online that says Zap. Uh. And I put that on as a tribute to him and his store. And we just immediately bonded because of that, but I already knew he was a big Psychedelic first fan, and I, I have numerous things from his store. So tell me about some of the items on the jacket. Uh, Are there any stories behind any? Um, a lot of stories. Uh, the very first thing that went on this jacket was I was out one night, and, uh, well, this, this bartender friend, she would always come up and punch me in the arm. And... Uh, just for some dumb reason, I got this idea to put it on my, on my jacket. Girls punch me here. That was the very first thing that went on this jacket. It's all faded now. I'm, I'm not used, I think it was this arm over here. But that was the very first thing that went on this jacket. And that's what started giving me this idea. Like, why don't I create a jacket that I always wanted? I, I remember back in the early 80s when I, I, you know, just going to Philly or going to shows, seeing people, just like doing their own thing. I thought, man, this is great. 
And that's, like I said, that's what sort of pulled me through the thing of my, after my dad dying, was just creativity. And I thought, why not do that? To me, it was inspiring. And I, here I am years later, and I, I think a lot of people seem to like what I'm doing. Um, but every band on this jacket, I've seen live, oh, except wow. for the Sex Pistols. I never saw them. I, I obviously still support the local scene. Um, you may not be aware of this, but I kind of uh, co-host a alternative new wave night over at the Village Nightclub. Okay. We do that every month as much as we can. Sometimes they don't have a slot for us, but we basically cater to that style of music. It's all 80s, uh, mixed, we sprinkle a little bit of punk rock and some of the 90s um, kind of stuff like KMFDM, uh, Sisters of Mercy, uh, Nine Inch Nails. I, I like hearing all the different styles and it is what you make out of it. And I think whoever inspires you, we all, we all know that music has pulled us through things in life. And it might, it might maybe make you heal going through a tough time or, or you might just be happy hearing certain music that you like. Watch the artist listen to what they're singing about. I mean, there, there's, music's always been about passion. There could be different levels of it, but it's always been about passion. There's so many people that approach me, so why are you doing this or why are you doing that? And I really don't even know how to answer that question. It, I'm not sure what the right answer is, but the best way I can describe it is just fun. Well, you have to get that question a lot. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You, I can't even begin to tell you all the stuff I've heard over the years. I've been picked on uh, heard all kinds of stuff behind my back. Um, not a reason why I'm... Do you kind of feed off that? No, well, no, 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 not at all. Not at all. I, I, I didn't like it at all when I first started hearing it. People would want to, like, you know, challenge you. They would want to you know, threaten you. Um, I'm not going to get into some of the things that happened with that, but nothing came out of it, but it was kind of scary, some of the things that came my way. But uh, I, I kind of chose just to ignore it over time. And, and I think that works better. I, it just, it doesn't give them something to feed off of. Being able to ignore that, is that some kind of fulfillment then? Yeah, guaranteed, guaranteed. I, 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 I don't really, I'm not hiding anything, obviously. Um, I think you really have to talk to me to really get a feel for who I am, like what I'm about. And uh, once again, we all know too many people just are very quick to judge. They're very quick to, you know, critique or pick on people. It's very easy to do that, but it's very hard to actually go up to someone, even if you don't understand them, or even if you might not like them, and actually approach them and just say, hey, what, what, what's your, like, like what, what's your whole deal? And well, that being said, I've had a lot of people that came up to me that actually thanked me for helping them to see something different. Okay. Uh, there was a, a trucker guy that came up to me. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Four years after I met him is when he came up to me and he thanked me. And I, I could, I kind of, I kind of visually remembered his face, but I, I couldn't, I was stunned that he, I, he didn't really need to do that, but he did. And that made me feel like really, really like, wow, it's one person, but I help one person to think different. I thought that was great. So under the mohawk and behind the leather jacket mm -hmm. there, who is Ray? Just a regular person. What do you do for a living? I'm like your next door neighbor. Yeah. Uh, Mowing the lawn on Saturday. <laughs> Uh, something like that, but uh, I've heard I'm a probation officer. I've heard I'm a lawyer. I'm heard, I've heard I'm a bank manager. Like, I don't know where all these stories have come from. I really don't. My first job was a paper boy. Next job after that was uh, working at Victor Weaver. What's, what's it called now? Tyson. Yeah, that's where I worked. Hated that job. I, that's the only job I ever hated. I then worked in a factory. I actually ran uh, what they call a drill and tap machine. I later became a quality control inspector. I pretty much would roam the entire factory. Um, I actually liked that also because I got to learn every job. Uh, I've worked retail. Um, I also worked in a computer uh, repair center. Uh, well, we sold computers. We custom built them. 
and we did repairs. So I've had a lot of various type jobs. Nothing real high end professional. Do you have any hobbies or other interests? Hobbies. Um, well, my favorite hobby, well, two favorite hobbies are hiking and photography. Um, but I love to go to historical sites. I love this kind of stuff, but being out in nature where it's quiet, um, I guess you can kind of see I'm kind of like a walking contra contradiction in a lot of ways here. <laughs> but I, I like that. I like that. It's, it's the diversity of my life is fun. I, 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 I wouldn't trade it for anything. I do keep to myself. I still have a shyness. I, I, I actually really do. Um, sometimes you can't tell that when I'm like in a real gregarious kind of mood, but I, I'm still kind of shy. I, I still not comfortable in big crowds, which is weird because I've hosted like Halloween events. I've hosted benefits for, uh, uh, we did a huge benefit for a uh, premature baby who had an underdeveloped, underdeveloped lungs. Um, we had a huge benefit over at the Village Nightclub. And uh, I think we raised, I believe it was over $15,000. They asked me to host it. It was a friend of mine um, who, yeah. who's a baby there. They live out in Arizona now, but they flew out here. Um, mainly the, the, the folks in, I kind of went off track here, but the, the folks in Arizona at the hospital, they, only gave her a certain time frame that she might be around here. Yeah. And uh, this was going back about four or five years ago now. They brought her out to Children's Hospital down in Philadelphia. And I don't know what they did, but she is growing and she's becoming healthier. She still has to wear a tube. Uh, but we did a huge benefit for them. And uh, um, I also did a big benefit here that you guys may have heard of or maybe don't even know about. Um, my 50th birthday, it's a big number. You know, it's, it's, I didn't know what I was gonna do. And I thought, you know what? I'm doing something for Make-A-Wish. Oh, cool. I wanna do something to help a kid out. And uh, when you really think of, like a lot, sometimes people say that, but when you really get down to it, Especially as you get older, you realize like we are passing along knowledge and information. And what we do with it is either going to help them or it's going to make it more of a struggle. And I'm thinking anything you can do to help the kids, why not? And I chose Make-A-Wish. I knew I was going to do it. I organized five bands here and uh, we had karaoke DJ afterward. And we, well, we, had, we had a dunk tank. We raised over $4,600. So that, that was a huge, that, that just made my heart burst. You know, I was so happy. Um, I was a little bummed I couldn't meet the little boy, but I guess they have uh, restrictions on yeah, privacy, so. privacy, which I totally understand. But I was excited. I heard he got to go to Disneyland. So. Is that what it was? He went to Disneyland? Yeah, yeah that's what I heard. Cool. So very cool. I have so much fun doing this, I'm, I'm not going to quit. I'll tell you what, you know, there, there's probably some kids out there that are struggling with uh, trying to find like their identity or, or they might like something and they're getting bashed about it. And what I would tell them, do what you wanna do. I mean, I, like hopefully your friends are gonna embrace you for what you're doing, but yeah, don't, or don't give it up. You know, stick with what you like. Cause when you think about it, like there's, when people aren't happy, it's usually because they're not being who they wanna be or they're not doing what they want to do. The only thing that I require from someone is respect. And I give that back 100%. A lot of the problems we have and have had my entire life is respect. When, when things aren't respected, things tend to like tumble down. You know, they, 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 they don't remain stable and Boy, boy, without that, you have to have some kind of honor and some kind of respect. And I just, when I, when I see that not happening, it really bothers me. You really should give everyone a chance. It's really not that hard.